Welcome, welcome. I'm Spitface. You're listening to Bob's Panties and Sports. I'm here with the First Lady of Sports Talk, Cheryl Smith. At, 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 at First Lady, it it, it just, uh, uh, you know, I'm wondering, you know, I'm, uh, what's that? that uh, you, you know, remember that newspaper, the Weekly World News? Or, you know, way back when, when you check out at the counter and they'd have the space, you know, so-and-so is really a space alien, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and they'd put two people together and they secret love child and all of that. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, but look, looking at the sports news this week, you know, uh, now there was some, you know, dramatic games, stuff like that, especially college football, all of that. But, you know, box, you know uh, boxing and all of that. But I'm looking up here, it, it's so, you know, I'm like, did, did, did sports fall into the twilight zone? It's wild. Mm-hmm. But, but First Lady, are you all right down there in, 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 in Florida, Florida with that hurricane approaching? We want to make sure you is okay. I'm doing fine. Good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone. And you know what? They used to have this called the Wacky World of Sports. Well, this week it was a wacky, wacky world of sports. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing fine. Looks like Hurricane Ian is not coming our way. But, you know, there's some other depressions out there. So who knows what's going to happen to Florida. But we just praying that it doesn't come our way. Yeah, All right, but, but, uh, y'all folks, uh, and wherever the hurricane is, it, it can dissipate in the Gulf. Hey, hey, they churn up the water some. Get, the water needs to churn it up, you know. Get some of them dead bodies up to the top. We can find out who's burning them. All right, First Lady, we're ready. What you say? Oh, wait, this week on Shout Out, we have music from Michelle Ayers. I wonder if she related to old Roy. Will she find her shining star get the cold feel of the mute button? First Lady, we're ready. What you say? Each week we are trying to figure out what is going on in the sports world, not the plays of the week, more like the players of the week, and this is so true. Are they trying to tell us something? So we ask, what you saying? Fly, little birdie, fly. Time keeps on slipping into the future. Time keeps on slipping, slipping into the future. So I want to fly like an eagle to the sea. Fly like an eagle, let the spirit carry me. I want to fly, fly right into the future. The little birdies known as the NBA wishes it could fly far away from the scandal in Boston and the damning report in Phoenix. Robert Sarver, the disgraced owner of the Phoenix Suns and Mercury, who was fined $10 million and received a one-year suspension in selling the team, no, is selling the team. An investigation issued a damning report that val- validated he made racist and misogynist remarks while creating a toxic work environment. The Celtics suspended head coach Ime Adoka for the 2022 and 2023 season, citing violations of team policies. After reports, Yudoka was in a consensual, intimate relationship with a woman employed by the franchise. Given Sarver was so blatantly racist, we wonder if he made those comments around other owners. And it was acceptable? Mm. Maybe that's why he showed lackluster support for Brittany. The NBA coaches union is not discussing the situation with Ime and no one else. What's the real deal? Marvelous Marvin Hagler, rest in peace, Bernard Hopkins, Roy Jones Jr., and the Steve Miller Band are asking, what you saying? Oh, i tell you something, spit face. <laughs> the NBA is a 365 days um, um, league. You know, they, they're always, they dominate the media limelight for 365 days. From the Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons drama to the Robert Sarr, now he made Udoka. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, that's all we're talking about is the NBA. And um, it's just crazy stuff. I mean, I'm quite sure they like the publicity, but they don't want this type of publicity. <laughs> <Trust me. laughs> 
All right, and let's let's go get to the Robert Sarver situation first. And I just want to give kudos to PayPal. And the reason why I'm giving kudos to PayPal because PayPal was one of the major sponsors for the Phoenix Suns. And the fact that they were entering in the last part of their contract, they refused to enter into another sponsorship with the Phoenix Suns if Sarver remained as the owner. And I don't care, you know, LeBron James came and spoke out, Chris Paul, Draymond Green, all of them spoke out about this situation. But it is losing that sponsorship that put pressure on Sarver to sell his team. Because we know the old ass, money, what's the old ass? Money talk, bullshit, walk. Yeah, that's what it was. It was money was talking because this company was getting ready, this franchise was getting ready to lose a lot of sponsorship because of his actions. And what was to me more shocking to me was Adam Silver's decision to suspend Sarver for a year and fine him $10 million. I was stunned that he didn't get anything harsher than that because the only difference from his actions and Donald Sterling's racist remarks was that Sterling's remarks were captured on audio recording. (laughs) That's the only difference. However, the investigation did corroborate the reports about Sarver, so I really thought Adam Siller was outright wrong with his disciplinary Mm. approach. You know, his punishment was solely decided by him, which was not the way it was done when it came to um, Donald Sterling, they they went to a vote and everything. So I don't right. understand. I don't understand why um, Adam Silver was very. I, I guess the word is conservative or lax about this. To be honest with you, very surprising on Adam Silver's part mm. because you know he's he is basically one of the best um, uh, commissioners in the league. I mean, in in sports, he's one of the better commissioners in sports. You know, we know this stuff goes all, on all the time in the NFL, and we know how that happens in the NFL because they're going through it right now with the uh, Washington, well, with the Commanders, Washington Commanders. So, and then you had the situation with the um, the Raiders and all that stuff coming out. <laughs> so, I mean, but we they they all still there. Ain't nobody lose the team. The only person who lost the NFL team was the owner in um, Char- uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. He do, he was forced to sell his team. But anyway, getting back to the NBA, um, yeah, and Sarver never showed contrite regarding this report. He had been rumored he was upset with Silver's punishment, punishment, and so, you know, he really never accepted that he was wrong in what he did, and he had a toxic environment. So it was great that they he decided because he said cancel cancel. Uh, the cancel community or what you want to, you know, this is the way we are, that people are never forgiving anymore. But anyway, we're glad that he's he's not <laughs> gone yet because he hasn't sold the team. So we will see how that turns out. Now, moving on to the Celtics. You talk about a sloppy mess. The Celtics have involved themselves in this ridiculous sloppy mess. It's not, I ain't going to call it ridiculous, but – I mean, like so many of the the men in the league, the NBA league, the media, and the, they were all a little bit upset with the situation would happen with you, Ime Udoka. Now, Ime Udoka was wrong, 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 wrong. We I'll get into that later. But there seems to be a situation. The same situation happened with the Minnesota Timberwolves in September 2021. We did not know beforehand that Gerson Rojas, the president of basketball operations for the Minnesota Timberwolves, was terminated. He got terminated. It came out after he was terminated that he had a consensual affair with a staffer. And in this situation, Rojas and the women involved were let go. Now, we never knew who the woman was, and from my understanding, but the thing is, they let both of them go. But the thing is, nothing was leaked to the press until after the situation happened. And I'm not going to say it's not going to happen. Things, leak, things get leaked out, whatever. But in this Boston Celtics situation, it is so different because unlike the Timberwolves, somebody did leak this story to the press. And I know the, they had a press conference. 
And, of course, the owner of the something says that we didn't leak it. Like, hell you didn't leak it. Somebody in your organization leak it. Because whatever the story was prior to that press conference, everything that was reported came to fruition. So don't tell me you didn't leak it. First, ESP Adrian Wojnarowski reported that Ime Udoka was facing a year-long suspension. That was even before the Celtics acknowledged anything. Then Sham Shonry of the Athletic and Stadium, Stadium reported that Udoka had an improper, intimate, consexual relationship with a female member and, uh, you know, of the team. And it was deemed a violation of the franchise code of conduct. So I, I, I just don't understand. And, and, and also, um, Shams then also came back with another tweet later and stated that the Celtics first became aware in July of the intimate relationship between Udoka and the, uh, the female employee. The woman recently said that Udoka made unwanted comments towards her prompting the team to launch a set of internal interviews. All right? That came to fruition. And even Stephen A. Smith stated before the – he even stated it would be before the press conference, the day of the press conference, but he had mentioned a couple of times on first take that Udoka was going to lose 50% of his salary. That's what he was here. So everything that was discussed in the paper, in the press, on social media – it was 100% corroborated at that Celtics press conference. Therefore, someone in the Celtics organization leaked this information. So I don't understand why that happens. And then the, and the press conference, I mean, what was the purpose of that press conference if you were not going to give more details to clarify the situation? But then you're going to say things now that cause people to even speculate more. <laughs> I mean, the Celtics are the, the Celtics are bad with optics. They 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 are totally bad with optics. They should have just made sure this was kept in house, then come out with the fact that he was going to be suspended or fired, and the, did it the way the Timberwolves Timberwolves did because nobody you know the, the people speculated, but it was after the fact, and it seems to obviously be that at one point in this relationship between Udoka. And this woman, it was a consensual relationship. But then at one point, it seems like it has become a harassment situation. That's what the rumors are saying. They're not facts. It, it, is, it is rumor out there that the female member ended the relationship and Udoka was obsessed with her. That came from TMZ to use the word obsessed and continued to pursue unwanted passes, advances. You know what, Spitface? I mean, I used to be in corporate America. I worked in the health care. And, you know, we used to get training on her sexual harassment. That sounds like sexual harassment to me. <laughs> when you end something and you continue to pursue somebody with unwanted advances, that sounds like sexual harassment. And if you know anything about most people's organization policy, if you sexually harass somebody, you are immediately terminated. So I don't know why he wasn't fired. It doesn't this there's still something that doesn't make sense to me about this whole situation. Because why would you keep him? I mean the fact that you kept him now, your players are gonna to have to ask ask uh, they're gonna be asked a lot of questions because Monday is the NBA media day. <laughs> So, you know, it's media day, so there's going to be a whole bunch of questions asked. I mean, if he was terminated, then you know what? They'd ask the questions, and that's it. It'll be ended. But now you're going to keep this man around and suspend him for a whole year, and then you're going to make a statement that, oh, we we will reevaluate after the year. Now, what kind of nonsense is that? Reevaluate what? I mean, I, I, I really just don't understand why. It, it's something else that is still missing from this crazy puzzle, Spit Face. It's got to be something else that's missing because I don't understand. Somebody is sexually harassing somebody. you got to terminate them. So I just think the way this organization handled this was not the right way. And speaking of email, Duke, uh, Udoka, I mean, what a 
stupid, stupid man. He created this situation. Why would you jeopardize your job? You had to have known that what you were doing was not appropriate. You had the most to lose. I mean, you you chose to engage in this relationship. Yes, we know it takes two to tangle, and I know there was a lot of things to or why the woman's name wasn't mentioned because there was a lot of women in the net and the uh, Celtics organization that got blasted all over the internet and I ain't gonna lie because I you know I was looking at it too I, I'm not gonna lie about that I mean that's just human nature people you know in, in today's society we live and die by the internet and everybody is going to the internet so so we are it, it's different now we you know, we got access to information rather quickly, and everybody's trying to get that information out and disseminate it to everyone. So, yes, yeah, some people definitely got dragged through the mud regarding this situation. But had the Celtics handled it the right way, it wouldn't have been like this right away. And the thing is, too, that they also brought out in the uh, news conference is that Udoka was the only one who was disciplined. And if you, I mean, that's kind of weird too, you know. So, like I said, there's something more to this, and it's just a bad look on Udoka. Ime Udoka may never ever get another coaching job again behind this. It'll be quite interesting, and maybe he'll come back to the Boston organization. We shall see. And I'll tell you one thing: it depends on how the new coach. Uh, Joe Mazzuli, I think his name is, depends on how he does. If the Celtics are not good this year, you know what? You <laughs> don't come maybe back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Spitface, what are you, what are you talking about? This I, I know, you know I took a long time. But I, you... I, I, I got it. I got it. You know, I, I, uh, First Lady, I was uh, – uh, I'm going to go back to, to Robert Sarver. And because, uh, you know, uh, I'll say a less titillating story. But really, you know, they, they you know, uh, when you look at the, uh, you know, you made a comment about the, the like the NFL owners where everybody kind of know, old boys club and we and we still racist and plantation owners. You know, that, 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 that's how, how, how it seems like it rolls. But uh, and. and um, and there's only been an owner or two who was dumb enough to just be a, a total, just, let's say, ass and create that toxic environment. They've only had a couple and uh, that were exposed to be that way. And um, my thinking is, is that most N- NBA, NFL, professional sports organizations, uh, are, you know, they're a business. And the owners want them ran as a business. And they want uh, whatever businesses do to make sure that there are no, quote, hiccups. They want that in there. And they want that starting at the top. So they say, look, I'm the owner. I ain't going to do this stuff because I don't want my employees to do it because this is a business. And we got business. We are, our object is to make money. You know, and this does not uh, 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 having a, a, a culture that's based on corporate values is important to us because that's what's going to keep everything rolling and me happy as an owner because they're not making money. When I introduce, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, when I introduce my, you know. Uh, leanings that are, 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 are counter to that, you know, yeah, I might have became the owner, but then everything starts from the top down. So if I'm disrespecting a female staffer or I'm disrespecting a male staffer, well, that carries on down the organization. You know, that's how it is around here. And sooner or later that rot, you know, because it's starting at the top, is uh, is going to rot away that structure. Now, uh, but, uh, you know, my experience with people. Now, now, First Lady, I'm sure that you have uh, 
male, let's say male cousins, you know, that you grew up with, you know, male relatives that, mm-hmm. you know, you, you love them to death, and they have a way, they are, you know, you, hey, look, this is my cousin Frank or Mike or, or, or Baba, <laughs> you know, whoever, you know, they, and you know that, I'll just say that, um, they aren't. Uh, they aren't like in their heart of hearts uh, misogynist, but they have some misogynist behaviors. <laughs> okay, they have some misogynist behaviors. Now they may be respectful enough to not express those misogynist behaviors in public <laughs> or or amongst you know people that would be offended. Like you know, we keep that to the boys. But it's there. And they would, uh, you know, even though they had those behaviors and make those statements and whatever, you know, their relationships are whatever they are, you know, stable, you know, they're taking care of the kids, wife, and, you know, doing whatever they're supposed to be doing. But you know it's there, that, 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 that's in their conversation. Okay, so that's my experience. They don't hold back. Now, um, you know, I'll say that, you know, uh, when I look back at, at younger days, and not as like a conviction, you know, oh, God, you know, hey, you know, you, you, if you don't want to learn, die young. <laughs> you know, <laughs> then you don't you learn nothing, you know, you died young. But if you, as you live and experience, you can look at things and go, you know, not that I would have changed that or whatever, but uh, that ain't how to behave today. Or at least how I want to behave today. So, you know, people, you know, Muhammad Ali, you know, was once asked, hey, you know, do you still have the same views you had when you was 20-something? He said, damn, man, I'm 50 years old. You know, I, I done had a lot of life. Things I thought at 20, I learned at 30. Guess what? <laughs> Quite, you know, and then things at 30, I learned, you know. You know, you keep learning and experiencing. But one thing, I, uh, people like Sarver. Uh, they may not if they if they bold enough to have that behavior in their own company. Okay, now they in one of the most exclusive clubs in the world. You know, when you really think about it, how many people own a NFL franchise out of the billions of people on the planet? So they in a Super, super, super exclusive club. Now, uh, these guys ain't, you know, I'll say polite society, something like that. They're real people. They make money. They're ruthless. Uh, or or they're not, you know. But whatever it took, however they got their wealth, they in that world. And uh, you have a certain comfort level around, amongst your peers. So I'm going, if he expressing these views and actions and behaviors with his own company, does he really clean up his act around the other owners? Or are there other owners who said, you know what, (laughs) that's what I do too, you know. (laughs) And then are there other owners who say, you know what, uh, man, the way he running his company, uh, who don't, you know, they know but don't, don't mention it. You know, they're enablers, so to speak. So, you know, um, uh, and and I'm with you, First Lady, like, man, he, you know, uh, uh, things in that report, I mean, mean the the language, you know, not just, you know, there's, hey, baby, you know, maybe we can get together, da-da-da, or look at that, you know, something like that that's rude and crude. But he was saying some language that we we ain't repeating, you know. <laughs> and me and First Lady ain't shy, but, you know, and this ain't a kid show, but we ain't repeating that language. And you go, dude, you know, just as a grown person. But uh, uh, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's good that he's selling the team, and it is questionable why, why uh Silver didn't come down hard and, and, and work with the owners. So that, because this is not a good thing. Now the uh, Udoka, oh, man. Coach, coach, coach. Uh, there is, 
uh, there's just questions because there's Twitter reports, there's uh, innuendo, speculation. What was it? You know, even if it uh, uh, ends up being accurate, there's just stuff out there. And if you notice that no one is really saying what the deal is, not the not the uh, <laughs> not the Celtics. Not Udoka, not the woman, not the NBA players have went, they ain't got no comment. The the NBA coaches union is not saying, hey, look, we want to look at this matter to see if, you know, if if our our member is, you know, uh, you know, maybe there's some other things there. Maybe we don't agree that he should, you know, let's look at this situation, you know, uh, you know, and including, well, what's the punishment for the other person, you know, and, you know, what what's the deal? Uh, everybody on mute. Mute. Now, there may be leaks all over the place, but see, that's, like I said, that's a leak. You know, that's not a, well, uh, one of my sources, well, I can't identify the source. Well, you know, well, might be a reliable source, but you know, and, and the information may manifest. And but they have decided that whatever this is, they're gonna let it ride. Now, uh, so what? What that says to me, you know, like first lady, like you said, there is there is way more to this, and it's like, you know, uh, uh, I can. You know, I can get an organization being embarrassed, not one a situation where uh, an executive member uh, sexually harasses someone on the staff. I mean, that in itself, oh, you know. But as you said, First Lady, usually they deal with they deal with that quick, fast, and in a hurry. You know, they don't like it, but hey, look, hey, uh, you know what? Sorry, you know, under our policy, bam, you. you uh, your service is no longer desired at this institution, you know. And maybe the other part, maybe everybody get fired. But hey, you know, it's it's no. This is what happened in the discussion. But there is something that has to do way more than the sexual har- harassment itself. And um, there is a difference between. Uh, Hey, would you like to would you like to go out? No. Okay. If you ask a woman out and she says, No, not not interested, you didn't harass her asking that. But you but you may be harassing her if you ask a second time. So because you already said no. So that that's in the conversation right there. Now you may think, uh, well, wow, you know, from the way that she's acting, you know, maybe she changed some. Act. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> you have, you have to act from uh, her turn. When she interested, she'll let me know. Now I may look. I already asked once, so that was my first hand. Now some women, you know. May may never, you know, they might be well. Well, wow, you know, he could ask me again, but hey, that that's just how the cookie crumble. <laughs> no means no. Doesn't mean that uh, uh, that they don't like you or this, but no, it was no. And you don't know situations people got got going on. They do not have to sit up there and explain to you. Well, let me tell you what I got going on. You know, my mom is ill, such and such. You know, right? You know, yeah, you know, I got my my, my kids. Da 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 da. You know, they they don't need to tell you that. Explain them. They said no. Now, uh, uh, be happy that 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 it was a polite no. No way, you know, okay, you know, maybe she got something going on, and hey, th- thanks for letting me know. I, I, you know, I can move on. So, uh, Yudoka, you was just being a dope. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, uh, uh, brothers, uh, the, the women too, uh, if you are married, there's a, there's a reason why certain people are single. 
because they because they they're not going to uh, behave uh, 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 in a married relationship the way that's kind of like required. But they know that they're not. You know, hey, look, I'm single because if I was married, you know, I I, I don't want to do that. You know, doesn't mean that they don't want to have a deep bond. They don't want to do that because they're responsibilities, and they're they they you know not just uh, you know society, but you know your you and your partner have brought together. You may not want to do that, but be honest about that. If you reach that point where it's like you know what you know uh, I really want to you know you need to uh, to see what you're gonna do for real and. Uh, and don't be a coward, because see, really, a, uh, another word for cheater is coward. But hey, I, let me get off my soapbox. But I'm going. NBA, I ain't heard nothing from the NBA coaches union. There is more to this story, first lady and Sarver. Now we understand why your ass uh, wasn't on the front line to protect uh, your player from your team, Brittany Griner. Mm. Mm. Now you know. Now we kind of got an idea. You don't care about her, you know. She, uh, she a black dyke. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> no, I'm saying how he it's said it. Big. I wouldn't say, Brittany. I ain't say that about you, you know, baby. You do whatever oh. you do, whatever you want. Just get the hell up out of Russia and don't go there. To, do not be y'all. Don't be going to no Russia, uh, Turkey, all these places where uh, they, you know, just leave them alone. Leave them alone. I, I know the money. Money ain't everything. Your freedom is more important. Hmm. All right. Well, you know, you you finished this. Thing. You got me on that last thing about Brittany. Okay. Look. Um. And you know what? You know, I'd be remiss to mention Nia Long in this whole situation. Mm. That is the partner of Ime Yudoka. They have been engaged since 2015, and you know, she did release a statement through her. Um, publicist and it was released to TMZ and you know she said she is concentrating on her children because those are the most important things to her right Mm -hmm. now and um, but you know the rumor came out you know that was a quote unquote supposedly it was Nia Long um, camp that released the name of the young lady because you know she knows the name you know she knows who it is you know you you, Ime had to tell Nia Long, who the lady was or is, and the sad part about it, that the the room, and I'm going to finish this quickly. The sad part about the whole situation too is this person allegedly is responsible for providing his um, making his arrangements for his travel, and supposedly he does. She did Nia Long's travel because Nia Long recently moved to Boston. You know, and the sad part about it, the rumor was that Yudoka knew this was going on for months. You know, they said the thing came out in July. She just found out about the whole situation a couple of maybe weeks ago when they knew it was going to be released. So, is you know, this man, he made, man, I don't know what's going on with him, but, I mean, you knew about this in July. You told You would think that you would say something to Nia around that time, but you still try to keep this hiding and ducking, keeping on this uh, relationship. Man, anyway, I digress. Let me, let's go on. <laughs> this is, this look, like you said, we ain't heard the last of this story. And, and let me, before I go, Matt Barnes came out in support of Ime Udoka. He found out the truth, and then he backtracked his words. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, he backtracked his video. He had a video out saying that why they suspended this man for a year. Then he came back and said, it's, this is some messy stuff. It's a hundred, hundred times worse than he thought. So we still don't know the whole truth. But anyway, all right. Back to you, Spitface. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years, rocking my peers and putting suckers in fear, making the tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass go boom. Explosion, overpowering, over the competition. I'm towering. Wrecking shop when I drop these lyrics that'll make you call the cops. Don't you dare stare. You better move. Don't ever compare me to the rest that'll all get sliced and diced. Competition. 
paying the price. I'm going to knock you out. Huh. Mama said knock you out. Huh. We are talking about the knockout punch to the reputation of Brett Favre. Mm-mm-mm. Brett Favre earned over $250 million from playing in the NFL and is raking in the dough being a celebrity sponsor and broadcaster. You know, Brett is kind of that copper gold uh, commercials that, you know, he, he kind of, to me, the old boy living large. Now, Brett's daughter played volleyball at the University of Southern Mississippi, and Daddy wanted his daughter, you know, to play in the best facility for his little girl. You know, hey, you know, proud papa. Now, with all the cash Brett has, and his rich friends, because Brett got some rich friends. What do they decide to do? You know, hey, we're going to donate some money to build a nice volleyball center for the University of Southern Mississippi, right? No. <laughs> what he and his rich friends decide to do is rip off money targeted for poor communities. You know, think Jackson, Mississippi with no water to build a state-of-the-art $5 million volleyball facility, you know, for his little sweetie, little daughter, uh, to play volleyball at the University of Southern Mississippi. You know, just take that $5 million away from a community like Jackson. Now, apparently a total of $70 million dollars was ripped off in the welfare scam by state officials, including past Governor Phil Bryant. Mississippi is the poorest state in the Union, yet money directed to help the poor communities tends to get appropriated by the rich white communities. Should Brett's commercial sponsors be criticized for spending money on a cheetah and thief? Leroy Satchel Page, Walter Buck Leonard, and James Cool Papa Bell are asking, what you saying? You know, First Lady, um, uh, this story makes my blood ball boil like the citizens of Jackson, Mississippi, who had to boil water for, for weeks and, uh, and months because their system was so outdated and so... Uh, you know the the EPA. You know, hey, look, y'all, this, y'all need y'all, what needed a uh, hundred million. Uh, this gonna, uh, you need a, a billion dollars because of the neglect in a state that says, you know what, uh, we're not gonna give you money that the federal government has allocated because you don't know how to manage it the correct way. We don't, we don't like how you handle that money. You know, now they haven't done, see, the money that you've already, y'all ain't doing a good job with the, with the pennies that we've given you. But see, the outlying suburban communities, oh, we need new sat, we need the, you know, so that the wheelchair people, we, you know, all of this stuff. Well, you know, well, since take that money, give it to us because, you know, we, we really got needs. But they don't have the same requirements. That all other cities in the state have. Other, other, we got to make an ex- Well, see, you just happen to be predominantly black, so we know that you're going to just waste the money. Now, we haven't found any ways. You know, it's like that voter fraud thing. You know, we've only found 10 cases of voter fraud out of 300, out of, out of 180, 200 million people that voted. Ooh, we big problem. You know, so, uh, you know, and, 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 and my God, First Lady, the Venezuelans are just overrunning Florida. <laughs> Your governor got to catch them in Texas before they get to Florida, you know. They invading by way of Texas. Oh, hell, the Venezuelans made it to El Paso. Send them out <laughs> before they get to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> you see him over the horizon, you know. But, you know, one of the most, uh, and, you know, I, I, I put it like this. Brett Favre needs to be off the air right now. He needs to be off the air right now. 
they already now this is uh, this ain't rumor this ain't twitter facebook this is called a fact they have text messages of breckfarb asking can this transaction this deal come back on me now If I'm talking to First Lady, and I say First Lady, I got a deal where we can build your son a martial arts training facility. Now, what it's going to involve is me taking uh, money from the Florida welfare system. And First Lady go, well, you know, that's good, but will it come back on me? See, they kind of call that conspiracy. Conspiracy, <laughs> and you know, and every, and I'm not talk, talk, talking about you know conspiracy theory. No, that's called conspiracy fact. <laughs> In every state of the union, <laughs> even those crazy states where people go, I want to lead a law in your state. You get together with someone else. Uh, and, the other thing they call that is an admission of guilt. Now, one thing about Brett Favre, First Lady, mm. is he can pass a Well, I mean, in his day, he could pass a ball. <laughs> he could pass, boy. That boy, died, you know, Hall of Famer, he could pass. He go pass his way right out of a jail sentence and start talking. <laughs> You did not. I know y'all did not know that he could win a singing competition, <laughs> but he will sing like a canary because the fans are gonna go, "Who else?" You know, because you know you want the person higher than you. And right now, the governor, <laughs> the ex-governor, uh, 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 I had his name here, <laughs> but he getting ready. He looked like he going down, you know. And it's a whole bunch of other folks. So, uh, but the but Brett Star sponsors, uh, he should be dropped. First lady, I, I'm off my soapbox. So what you saying, first lady? Well, you know, right now, Brett Favre has not been criminally charged, nor has the former governor, Bryant, at this point. But he, Brett Favre is named in the lawsuit by the state of Mississippi. Uh, so um, he is being named, and and even even receiving the money to build the um, volleyball uh, stadium or whatever it would be, the center. Brett Favre also received funds from this um, uh, charitable organization where some of the money was funneled. I, right now, I don't have the person's name, but money was funneled into this charitable organization. And they had indicated that uh, Brett Favre had speaking engagements mm. where he was paid uh, six hundred thousand. He was paid a lot of money for several mm-hmm. speaking engagements, which he had never spoke. So that was the fraud, that was fraud there. He had now he has already paid six hundred thousand dollars back, but the the state of Mississippi says he still owes money. So there's a lot more, you know, it wasn't just the volleyball center. It was other stuff that mm-hmm. um, funds was being given to Brett Favre. But, um, you know, so but he, he's in the lawsuit. Now, you know, you know, the question is should his sponsor be criticized for spending money on a cheater and a thief? You know, Brett Favre is in demand for endorsing products, and he's promoting Nike, Snapper, Sears, the remaining few that are out there, Remington hunting knife uh, rifles, Prilosec. Yeah, I see his Prilosec commercial, Sensodyne, Mastercard. We know we see the Wrangler jeans commercial, Berg, Bergstrom Automotive, Hyundai, and of course Copperfit. I even have a Copperfit product. <laughs> You know, now he's already lost two endorsement deals. Mm. He lost with Odyssey Health and Hallow. But what was so interesting, because I guess he is so much well-known for the Copperfit commercials, Copperfit actually came out with a statement 
basically saying that they're going to stand by him because they've only known him to be upright and honest, and they said he was cleared two years ago of this situation. He was ne- That's why he was never criminally charged. However, they will wait to see the results of the civil lawsuit because now that's, you know, the state of Mississippi is going after him on a civil basis. So they will see. So, But, I mean, for them to come out with a state, because we know Nike hasn't said anything, Sears, Wrangler Jeans hasn't said anything, and not only that, he he's also has a program on Sirius XM, mm-hmm. uh, the satellite. Um, they haven't said anything. And interesting as it is, many people publicly have been on ESPN wanting to know why ESPN and has not been covering this Brett Favre thing, but, and they've been covering the Ime Udoka. Well, you know, in my investigation, it was quite interesting that Favre is an analyst for a new NFL-focused website called 33rd Team. Guess who is in charge of the 33rd Team? Who is the co-founder? The ESPN and former Jets analyst Mike Tannenbaum is the mm. co-founder. He has yet to say a statement, so that makes me wonder why ESPN has been kind of quiet. But that's not true because ESPN has covered this Brett Favre situation. I know uh, Stephen A. Smith addressed it on First Take, and they've been addressing it on Sports Center. I've been seeing it, but obviously it's not to the nauseum as they've been doing with the email Udoka situation. <laughs> but again, keep in mind, Brett Favre is a former. NFL player, you know, this is about politics. And you remember ESPN came out a while back that they really don't want their sports people to be d- discussing politics. So anyway, I just thought that I'd throw that in. But in, in general, it's a bad look for Favre. And, and, and for any sponsor and endorsement, you know, deal, you know, behind him. Because this this is a scandal. And, and, and as you know, endorsement deals, you want your person who's endorsing you to not have problems or unwanted publicity. You you want them to be focused on your product, and especially for someone who's associated with stealing money from poor people. And you, I mean, it's sad when you think about it. It's hard for people. It's hard for people even to get that money, and it makes you wonder how much money is stolen from these poor people in other states and cities. What all these other people are doing? It really makes you wonder why you have this. Why you have such like Mississippi is such a poor community state. Jackson, Mississippi. There's several um, different cities in Mississippi that are very, very poor. And it makes you wonder how much money was stolen from several other communities. And uh, it, it's just, it's bad. It's, like you said, it seems like if they needed a, a volleyball center, they seem like you, like you said, he should be raised money. He should have gotten sponsorship money. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's sad. And it, it, it really makes you upset about this, to, for this to happen to poor people who don't have a fair chance in life as it is. And the little money that they have to work hard to get, they can't get it. And you, you know, they put through those people through a lot of paperwork that they got to file to get money from the city and from the state. And here, this money was allocated for these poor people and Brett Favre and his friends stealing the money. And, and Spit Face, it's more than seventy million. It's seventy-seven million. Mm. It, it's gone up to seventy-seven million. Uh oh, that mean, means in counting. In counting, exactly seventy-seven million. I mean, it's just re- it's just crazy, ridiculous. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. all I got to say. Yeah, yeah. First lady, you know. Um, uh, uh, again, here's a state that that, that said uh, to how they say to get the libs and all of that. The money that has been allocated to the poorest state in the union for unemployment, we are not going to accept. We're not going to accept that money. Now, uh, and uh, one of the things that they've been successful at doing is being able to say, hey, white folks are the state. Accepting that money means 
that the black folks are going to get it. <laughs> you know, that's the real deal. And the white folks, many of the white folks of the state are forgetting that during the Civil War, they were tricked in the fighting for the Confederacy. And this is why I say they were tricked in the in fighting for the Confederacy. Because they were fighting for a way of life that wasn't benefiting them. It was benefiting the privileged white people of the South. It wasn't benefiting the poor white people of the South. It was benefiting the rich, privileged white people of the South. And they, and they are falling into the same trap. Oh, that would help them out. How many single mothers happen to be white hmm. and struggling in the state of in the state of Mississippi? So you not think, and you know, oftentimes I go to media. Uh, I won't say the media, but I, I will say that uh, in the world of politics, <laughs> y'all need to show the impact on white people. Now, there are white people who say that, well, see, they're the lazy white people. <laughs> or oh, they're the poor white trash of white people. Because, see, they kind of have misguided themselves to think that they're going to be treated like the privileged white people. Hmm. Not getting, no, you're not. <laughs> you're gonna be, you might be able to live in a better area, but you ain't privileged. Not in what we got. No, 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 no. You know, but our job is we just want you to keep supporting us. And as long as we can say that, well, see, they ain't going to get none. We're going to make sure that don't happen. Oh, we're not going to accept Medicaid, Medicare funding in our state because that, you know, we want to own the libs. And you know where that money going to go? It's going to go to them black people. You know we you don't want to want that money. You know what? You know they that you know. Hey, they just need to you know deal with it, and get their act together. But how many white people? You know so. Um, but hey, look. I, uh, uh, well, you know statistics. Uh, wait a minute, Smith. Hey, statistics always show that there are more white people on welfare than there are black people because there was more of them. So I mean, if you look at most states, statistics shows that more white people are on welfare. But, oh, 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 yeah, like I said, single mothers, you know, uh, single mothers happen to cross all racial, ethnic, uh, you know, uh, political, uh, you know, you know uh, uh, lines. They do. But there has been a successful, the white privileged men have successfully convinced poor and struggling White families to stop that suffering is okay as long as it denies the other who can be black, white, whatever at that time from getting something. Sound like Donald Trump speaking to a lot of the poor white people that support him. Oh, let me see. Yeah, that, that that you should have. If you should have it. Not getting that the game is is that it is for the uh, uh, a certain white men to have privilege. And, and they don't want to share that that because it's privilege with the exclusive mm -hmm. club. First lady, please take us to break. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we have our inter. Uh, we have, excuse me, we have the. Uh, um, we don't. We have an interview with Michelle this time. No, no, we don't have an interview with Michelle. Yeah, no. Stay. Uh, okay, let me. I, I apologize. We have a Stay in. Coming up next, we have a performance <laughs> from Michelle Ayers on Shout Out Part One. <laughs> 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 the music flows in from around the globe to get a shout out from the panel first lady I can't wait to hear the music from Michelle Ayers on Shout Out, we feature new independent artists who are looking to find their shining star. If you like what we hear, we'll give the track a shout out. 
If we don't like it, we hit the mute. Today we are featuring Michelle Ayers from Grovetown, New Jersey. Man, I'm from New Jersey. I have never heard of Grovetown, New Jersey. Boy, she says, quote, I'm a native of Newark, New Jersey. I blazed the charts and shared the stages with greats from the Manhattans to the legendary Tina Marie and Jocelyn Brown. Ooh. All right, DJ, I'm looking forward to hearing this spit face. Let's hear Fast Steppin'.
Okay, that was interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Michelle Ayers. Well, you know, I'm still trying to find out where the heck is Grovetown, New Jersey, because I've never heard of Grovetown, New Jersey, and I think I know about just about every, every little city in New Jersey. But anyway, um, I'm going to shout it out. Now, it took a while for the song. It was a, it was more musical part of the song and her just, you know, uh, scatting or whatever you want to call it. Uh, near, I guess, three-fourths into the song, there, there, there came some lyrics to the song. Uh, and, and uh, I mean, I like the beat. The the um, I mean I'm gonna shout it out, but it seemed like there could be more volume, more more. What I'm trying to say, more more lyrics to the song. The song doesn't have that much lyrics, so so it it almost reminds me of a um, a chic song. You know how chic used to do their songs. <laughs> And it, it, it was the beat with the Sheik song. I mean, they had the same lyrics throughout the song. They really didn't have too much. I mean, the second the Sheik song had a little bit more lyrics than this song did. So, uh, but but I did love the beat. I loved the combination of the music, the the, the the music along with her voice. But it just needed some more lyrics to the song. That's all I'm saying, Spitface. What do you feel? You shouting it out? Well, I'm giving it a shout out, Ed, because uh, it uh, really uh, I, I'd say it's some classic house music, mm. and yeah, classic house music. Yeah. So they, uh, so she put it. I thought she put it together really well. You know, you can boogie for a while, you know, and uh, 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 I, I put it like this: you, you, you could uh, uh, ha- have some fun with it, uh, regardless of age. So, mm-hmm. you know, the, yeah, you know, you can get up and bounce around. You ain't got to do nothing all wild and, you know, <laughs> but get a little groove going. So I'm shouting it out. And, and she, you know, I, uh, the the thing about a lot of house music is there are a lot of really great singers and vocalists, but because of how they how house music is, is structured, a lot of times, you know, it makes you like, you want them to like, look, sing a song, will you? Throw some lyrics in there. But it's house music, so that ain't yeah, the deal. You're right, you know? you're right. You're right. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's the way to classify yeah. it is, as yeah. house music. It's more of a dance dance music versus an actual singing song, so to speak. Right, you know. Right. So, uh, And you can tell she got some voice. Yeah, no, I said she got voice. Yeah. I just wouldn't like to hear more of it. <laughs> right, that's what we you know. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. But I got to ask her, where the heck is Grove Town? I know Ocean Grove. I know um, there's um, 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 Cedar Grove. <laughs> yeah, to, uh, yeah. There's I, a you Grove know, Town. You know, Georgia. sometimes. So, you know, sometimes. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes the uh, the way the artists put their description, they might not have that. You know. Uh, it, the way we could read it might have looked like New Jersey. It might have. Oh. They might have just said here and then New Jersey and other part. You know, we don't know. But, oh, okay, okay. We'll, yeah, we'll get it. Grove, hey, hey, Michelle, Grove give us Town, a shout. Out. <laughs> yeah, Michelle, give us a shout because there's a Grove Town, a Grove Ten, uh, Texas. You know, <laughs> but where are, where are you? Or are you trying All to right. be incognito? You know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, on part two of Shadow, we'll have a, another track from Michelle Ayers. Looking forward to that. And looking forward to my favorite underwater friend. Is that the sound of my friend? It's time for Flippin'. All right, all right. It's time for Flip It, where our hosts defend the point and then flip the script and defend the opposing view. 
to a T. And the Dolphins upset the Ravens in Baltimore by coming from behind in the fourth quarter. Does this game say more about the Dolphins or the Ravens? Panel defend. This game says more about the Ravens who lost at home and the AFC North. First Lady, that um, one, uh, Miami going up to Baltimore and beating the Ravens uh, was probably unexpected by a whole bunch of people, you know. Because that, you know, you, you figure the Ravens' defense, you know, they running game, they, they you know, the quarterback is everything, and then you, the Dolphins, you know. Uh, so that, that was like, wow. But it, uh, I think right now, I think the Ravens are 0-2. So given that the Ravens are 0-2 and they lost at home, and didn't they lose at home the previous week? No, they I think, won, I think. They won. Oh, oh they won one? Okay, they yeah, won one. I think okay. the, Ravens, the Ravens are 1-1. One one. The Ravens are 1-1. Okay, they're 1-1. One one. But but I think that 1-1 one one looked kind of narrow, you know, <laughs> like maybe, you know. <laughs> and uh, for them to lose at home, uh, uh, you know, one thing, it, it, it makes the – you know what's go you know the AFC North was look, looking as one of the strongest divisions and coming out the gate the Bengals I think now that I think they're now they two. owe and two Bengals right, are the Bengals two. owe and two uh you got the um the Ravens at one and one and uh the the Steelers are what uh one and uh, two. One, one and yeah, one and yeah, yeah. The team, yeah, no, they're not one. They ain't one again. Did they win again? Yeah, they won the first. <laughs> I thought they week. had a tie. No, no, I, no, I, 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 I they, they won the first week. week. <laughs> yeah, they're one and two. You know, they 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 looking kind of you know who knows what with Mitch and uh, and Cleveland. I think is one and one, or you know, but you know it's like you know the whole AFC North is jumbled and. Uh, the Ravens aren't looking that strong. So I think that uh, Miami kind of revealed that there's some holes that they got to get filled quick. Um, uh, I, 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 so uh, I think it really says more about the Ravens, and they may not have that stranglehold on the AFC North that uh, the pundits were saying before the beginning of the season. That's what I'm saying, per se. Okay. Um, well, I I really <laughs> to me this game is more about the Ravens' horrible defense. They gave in the fourth oh, quarter horrible. horrible in the fourth quarter. They gave up twenty eight fourth quarter points to the Miami Dolphins. Twenty eight points. I mean. That's a that's ridiculous, and I'm not a big understanding. I, I don't, you know, I'm not into what the defensive schemes, you know, you know, people, you know. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't understand, you know, the different this defensive schemes. They were uh, supposedly they were in a they call it a cover three. Uh, the Ravens, <laughs> the Ravens secondary was not using obviously the correct defensive screen, but they they allowed the. Um, Dolphins wide receivers to get beyond them. I mean, Tyreek Hill and uh, Jalen Waddle were always running behind their um, safeties and quarterbacks. So you know, the, in listening to the Ravens talk about what happened and what went wrong, they said it was a lot of miscommunication between their secondary. And, and, and regardless, they looked like a high school defense trying to cover an NFL team. Mm. That's, that's what they look like. I mean, and I look, we can't also exonerate the offense, even though um, Jackson had a fantastic game. I mean, he set a record and everything. But there was some questionable play calling, you know, because especially in the red zone, because you know, I don't sure you remember, they didn't score a touchdown because of the play calling. Mm. Twice they didn't get into the end zone. So... To me, the defeat was an entire team situation, but more so on that defense. 
I mean, they got to do better than that because I don't care what you say. To give up 28 points, it's only 15 minutes in the darn quarter. <laughs> you gave up 28 points. That's a lot of points. <laughs> that is a lot of points to give up in a, in a, in the fourth quarter. And uh, that's what they did, and that's the reason why they lost that game. So I would put in blame definitely it's more about why the Ravens, what the Ravens did, and, and it was horrible. Mm-mm. All right. Well, we know that this is flipping, so we're going to flip to the, the script and defend. This game says more about the Dolphins and a loaded offense. Uh, can, can I say Hill and Waddle? <laughs> and they are not a law firm, you know. <laughs> and uh, I'll just say that to a T, uh, uh, one, uh, what, two, what reminds me of what's kind of, uh, you know, uh, going on with Miami and the way the offense is being structured uh, to help to a T, it almost kind of reminds me of how Belichick was with Tom Brady. Now, Tom Brady was not throwing, you know, I, I, you know the, him and I'm going to also say a Joe Montana. Now, I'm not saying that two, that, that two or T will have anywhere near the kind of success those two gentlemen have had, okay, in their careers. But... Uh, Joe Montana was a dunk and dinker. He dunk and dink them little passes in that West Coast offense, and they would toot, 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 go down, but they would steadily go downfield. And he let his playmakers make the big plays. But he dunk and dink. You know, like, then when he started, you know, when they, as they started winning and, you know, time, like the next season, okay, well, we know he's going to dunk and dink. He started throwing a little bit longer. And it was like, whoa, where did where this come from? You know, and so, you know, it was more like a growing into it. Now, uh, and sort of like the same with Brady. Brady didn't start, oh, I'm throwing, slanging it like Peyton Manning. No, he did not. It was a dunk, dink, and then and let your playmakers, and then as he got that confidence, he could slang that ball. And it looks like that that's the approach with the Dolphins. But the thing that allows that is, is that they are loaded on offense. They got that line together. They got their running game together. That So, so two ain't under the gun, pressured. And then they went and got some, and they got great wide receivers. I mean, you know, it's like, baby, I, 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 got, the, I, I, I got the Maserati, you know, set up for you. It's, the tank is full. Hit the keys. You know, hit the keys, boy. Just, just, don't, just don't run it into a ditch. Now, you know, so uh, uh, I, I think it shows, and it's going to show a, a, a lot of people in the NFL, that they are loaded. And uh, the other thing is, is that the defense had a lot to do with the Ravens not being able to come back. So they even improved there, which they weren't too bad. So I think this is a, look, you can have the, the Miami is not going to be able to be under the radar if they win another one or two games. If they win uh, at least uh, out of their next two games, they got to play some tough teams. If they win one of them, uh, they are no longer, uh, the, they might be, Early on, uh, contenders, not pretenders. First lady, what you saying? All right. The game definitely says more about the Dolphins, especially Tua Tagalova. He's been under heavy, heavy scrutiny this season to see if he can be the quarterback of the future for the Dolphins because, you know, they, what you said, that dink and dink, dink short passes, that's what they always say about Tua. That's all he can do. That's why he's so accurate because he only throws short passes. And when he does the long passes, 
he's not accurate with those long passes. Well, he showed that he could throw the long passes. I mean, he was very resilient under pressure, too. He threw six touchdowns. That's tied most for the Dolphins' history. Six touchdowns. So it was all about Tua. And also, it's also say more about their first time head coach, Mike Daniel, McDaniel. I mean, he shows that he's an aggressive play caller. You know, he made some major adjustment on the offense, and he was able to get his key receivers out in the open. He was able to get Tua. The offensive line uh, did quite well in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. So Mike Th- McDaniel, you know, in the past, you know, the former Dolphins coaches, they were very, very conservative with a lot of their play calling, but not Mike McDaniel, definitely not Mike McDaniel. And as you say, you say the law firm, well, they are known as the Cheetah and the Penguin. The Cheetah is Tyreek Hill, and Jalen Waddle is the Penguin. And oh, let me God. tell you, they, well, that's what he called them. They called the, hey, you know that. Uh, that He's the that, Cheetah. That, that. Yeah, that is just so, so cute. Yeah, you know, I just, but I mean, I like it. I like it. Cheetah and the penguin. You know, that's Waddle, what, the penguin. That's you know, what they I do. You know, when you go to a dolphin game, when Jason Waddle gets a pass and he does that, and they, people start doing the waddling. They waddle like a penguin. <laughs> so he got the nickname the penguin. But these two receivers are probably the two fastest receivers in the league. And the Dolphins' offense is definitely lethal. Now, if, if, if you're going to say it's an aberration, we'll find out this weekend. We'll find out moving forward. But if Tua can get them the ball, that's the key. But we saw that Tua can do it. And Tua has the confidence that he's never had before under um, Flores. Uh, you know, I hate to say it. You know, Flores never wanted Tua there. So he really did not support Tua. So it makes a big difference that Mike McDaniel is supporting Tua, and they have the weapons to order the weapons really for the offense. And the defense has always been there, even though initially in that game their defense was horrible because you know they because the Ravens were running right over the Dolphins, and and, and um, Lamar Jackson was running over them too. So, I mean, I forgot how many how many mile uh, how many uh, yards he had, but he had a lot. And uh, so, I mean, the thing is, they did buckle down in the fourth quarter, and that was the key. Also, is because they did stop Lamar. Uh, his name is Lamar, right? Lamar, yeah, Lamar Jackson. Yeah, they, Lamar. They stopped, yeah, they stopped him in the fourth quarter, and um, that was another reason why they won. So, you know, everybody here in, uh, my, in Miami and in, in South Florida, we're very excited about the Dolphins. The Dolphins are 0 and 2. I mean, 2 and 0. <laughs> this is a, I, I can't remember the last time the Dolphins were 2 and 0. I have to go back into history books and look that up. Probably, obviously, when they won the, the, um, Undefeated season <laughs> might have been the last time that they. <laughs> nah, that was the last. That, they had a couple of Marino years where they went. <laughs> I don't know. I don't go back and check the books, but I don't yeah, see where they the started last out to it. it to it. Oh, they had a couple. Of, they it's had a couple of two and oh five. It's been a long time for the Dolphins to be two and because usually the Dolphins have always started off slow, and then the last six games of the season they come on strong. Just like everybody used to say, they tease us enough to stick around <laughs> for another season. So we have to see. I mean, obviously the game um, this week, week three game, is going to be a true test because they played the Bills. And we'll see how good the Dolphins are really. If they win that game, man, man, oh, man, we talk about Dolphins could go undefeated. Because I looked at their schedule. Their schedule was not that hard. <laughs> Not that hard. So we'll see. All right. That's all I'm saying, Spitface. <laughs> all right, First Lady. Well, please take us to break. <laughs> all right. I don't, know if you can get it. I don't know how many. All right. On the other side of the break, we have another performance from. Not. I think we got Buck kicking. Oh, wait, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I lost my spot. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I apologize. I'm messing up on these breaks. Stay tuned up next. Butt kick in our favorite underwater friend on Flip It Part 2. 
<laughs> we'll get around to that performance. Welcome back. You are welcome, uh, First Lady. Bring us welcome. back. Sorry about that. <laughs> We're going to get our intro and our outro straight real soon. Okay, welcome back. You are still listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. Let's see what's happening on Butt Kicking, where we look at all things in the world of combat sports. All right. Luca Poklitz. Insane choke at Bellator's 285 was no fluke. Quote, I practice it every day in the gym. The Bellator welterweight debuted for the promotion with one of the most bizarre finishes seen in 2022. Poclit is 8-1 in mixed martial art, and he's 1-0 in Bellator mixed martial art. Put his opponent, Dante Shiro, who's 9 and 4 in mixed martial art and 1 and 2 in Bellator in mixed martial art, to sleep with an unorthodox choke in the opening bout of the Bellator 285 card at 3 Arena in Dublin, Ireland. Now, many were confused by what they saw in real time and even questioned the intent behind the choke. Poclet assures it was no luck. Yeah, this is what he said, quote, yeah, I know, I practice it every day in the gym, this submission. Plo Clint told reporters at the Bellator 285 post-fight press conference, I practice, my coach knows this submission, John Kavanaugh. John Kavanaugh, the head coach at SBG Ireland, calls the submission win the Luca Nader. <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> the Luca Nader. <laughs> you know, first lady, I was uh, uh, I actually paid a, a clip of the choke, and it, it is kind of kind of devastating looking. But uh, you know, and uh, uh, I, I put it like this: whoever he faces next, he better watch out for the Luca Nader. <laughs> Oh, he better okay. watch that. That Luca Nader is a bad move. Once he gets you, and um, but it gave me memories of uh, the of way back in wrestling lore, where they had the guy who the wrestler he put like that that hook. It, it was something he did. He grabbed one and put it on you, and and the wrestler would fall out. You know, <laughs> and uh, doctor somebody, but. Um, Man, 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 that that that's a mean. He got a mean move. I I want to see some more Luca, but you know, first lady, this you know, when we look at the world of combat, uh, did you know that your boy Money Floyd Money Mayweather knocked somebody out recently? And uh, yeah, he 40, did knock somebody out. He sure yeah. did. He yeah, at forty five, he still got a little while of going. He knocked out Miss Mixed Martial Arts star Makura Escure. Knocked him out. I'm like, Mama said, knock you out. <laughs> so go <laughs> Floyd. Go I wasn't I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna find it, but 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 you fans you know, in the combat sports, see what Floyd did. See what and uh uh, uh, there, I, I think there's an upcoming fight with with with, with Jake the Snake, you know, the pretend boxer who goes out and gets these guys who are, you know, like over the hill uh, to make internet boxing thing. <laughs> and the, the the question is, uh, has his act worn thin? Because he's got an upcoming fight. I don't know who who is with because I ain't interested. And you know, I'm going, hey, look, man up. And, and fight and get in and do the work to fight the 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 B pro fighters who are current, who your age or younger, and see what you can mix it up with. You know, like stop fighting these guys who ten years older than you. They ain't gonna win nobody's championship. Them days is behind. You know, 
So stop being a punk. Yeah, that's right. I said it. <laughs> stop being a punk. You know, because you bring your big ass here. I I live in Texas. We are we got it up here in Texas. So bring your happy ass over here. I got a rook a ruger for you if you really want to get upset. But get in the ring with somebody that's some real competition, and and and, and uh, uh, not these over the hill half men. And I ain't you know smiting them. You know they pros. They got pride. All of that. But look, y'all ain't the top flight entertainment. Y'all the boxers. Uh, uh, anymore. You ain't. And the ones who are heading that way, Jake the Snake, Paul, all the, you know, his brother, uh, to me, y'all a bunch of charlatans. That's all I'm saying, First Lady. I, let me get this back. But I, I've been on my okay. soapbox all so long. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had never seen the Luke I was actually trying to see if I can look at it, but uh, it looked like he had his neck all stretched. But anyway, I'll look at it again <laughs> after. <laughs> <laughs> it did look kind of dangerous. All right, it's time for our favorite underwater flint, fit, oh, friend. It's time for Flip It. The Titans got walloped by the Buffalo Bills. Is it time for Tennessee fans to start worrying, or it it's too early to panic? Panel defend. Avoid the rush. Start panicking now. Spit face defend. <laughs> yeah, you know that? <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, it's like the line for the bathroom. <laughs> you know, <laughs> avoid the rust. <laughs> Get there. <early. laughs> um, you know, Tennessee had, you know, really, really, they, you know, they played some, some, some big boy ball. For the 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 last few years, I mean, they played some big boy ball, you know, run you over, stuff to run down your throat, uh, you know, a conservative passing game, uh, uh, play action, you know, they, you know, really, they they've been kind of they've been running steamrolling over a bunch of teams for the last few years. So, but Tennessee fans, I think it's time to start worrying. Because with any good team, you know, highly competitive team that's constantly, you know, winning a division, being in the playoffs, there comes a point where the other teams start figuring out how to beat you. Especially when you run heavy and uh, Ryan, uh, uh, Tannehill's um, – Defects are no longer being uh, covered up by a great running game. And a great running game is getting stunted because it needs a quarterback that can actually open up the run from passing. So uh, it's starting to, you know, I'm going – the AFC South already was looking kind of suspect. <laughs> and and it's looking more so. So um, they might, you know, stumble their way into uh, winning the division because the AFC uh, South is just kind of, you know, wild and willy. But uh, 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 it's panic time. But break glass. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, first lady. Uh, it's panic time. Yeah, it is panic time. I mean, it, th- to be honest, the decline of the Titans started last season in the playoffs when they lost mm. to the Bengals. You know, they were the number one seed in the AFC, and they lost to the Bengals. Now, there's a lot of reasons for the fans to start panicking. Number one, like you said, Ryan Tannehill is starting to look like the old Tannehill from the Dolphin days. And we don't want to go back to those type of days of Tannehill from the Dolphins day. But like you said, because they had covered up so many of his, um, de- you know, so many of his problems that that it's not happening this year. It makes you wonder, should they have kept Marcus Mi- uh, Mariota? Mm. But at number two, yeah, they don't have a deep passing threat either. They really don't have number one receivers out there for Tannehill to throw to. Um, so, I mean, that's another problem that's happening. 
And thirdly, like you said, the running game has been very, very pedestrian. I mean, Derrick Henry, he's always been that elite runner, that bulldozer, but this year for the first two games, he's only averaged, I mean, he he has a total of 107 yards in two games, which is not Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry used to get 100-plus yards in one game. So, I mean, when you, like you said, Spitface, if you don't have that power um, game, that ground-to-pound game, it is going to cause people to be able to defend the Titans much better because Tannehill is not going to be able to do that play action that he did so well in the previous years when Derrick Henry was balling, when Derrick Henry was running the ball. You know, you didn't know if the ball was going to go to him with that play action, and that's why they were able to get a lot of receivers wide open for Tannehill to get the ball downfield. But it's not happening because Derrick Henry is struggling. And thirdly, the defense is suspect. They're not playing well. Their defense hasn't been well at all. It's not good. They've been allowing a lot of big plays. And that you can't win when you allow the big plays. You've got to be very consistent in your defense. And the Titans haven't been doing that. So, I mean... I think it's over now. I mean, yeah, they in what the AFC, the AFC South, the AFC South has is 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 probably one of the worst divisions in the league. But um, I mean, you got the Texans, you got the Colts, the Colts who are horrible this year for some reason. The Jaguars, who is? <laughs> could you believe the Jaguars are currently leading the le- leading the South? They're one and one. Everybody else in the division haven't won the game. <laughs> the Colts and the Texans, obviously, they tied each other. So, but they each lost the game. The Titans are zero and two. So, I mean, that's really pathetic when you think about it. The Jaguars one and one. My goodness. So that's how bad that AFC South is. And uh, and you mean to tell me the Titans are zero and two? Well. We'll see how they do. I forgot who they're playing this week. I think they're playing uh, – they can go 0-3 if I'm not mis- – um, oh, no, they're playing the Colts. So, you know, that's going to be a very interesting game because the Colts need to win too. So I think the Titans need to win more than the Colts. But um, we'll see how – but I'll tell you, they, they there is time to panic, definitely time to panic. All right, we're going to flip this script, panel defend. It's a long season, and no team in the AFC South is making any noise. They will make the adjustments to get on track. Spit face defend. All right. You know, First Lady, as you were saying, who would have thunk the Jacksonville Jaguars would be leading the AFC South, followed by the Houston Texans? (laughs) (laughs) And... In third, the Indianapolis Colts, and rounding out the bottom, the Tennessee Titans. Somebody got rich. Because <laughs> we know somebody bet this exact order by, by week two, and, and they, they racked up. Nobody, you know, everybody thought they'd say, oh, man, I'm going to just put it this way. And they, done, they done cast in at Vegas. But. How long do you really think it's going to stay that way? And uh, I dare say that the Colts and Titans could lose another game. And by the end of the season, the Colts and Titans will be, will be battling out for the AFC South division. They'll be right back there up on top. So, uh, you know, and so uh, I'm going Titan fans, uh, every team that's been at the top goes through this where, hey, you know, we was just winning it, and then they start out the season and they get kicked in the teeth. And then by the end of the season, because, you know, they got components and parts and players who know how to win. You know, I, it's not like basketball where they literally flick, the teams can flick a switch. 
you know, because they've been, you know, holding players out and doing stuff, getting ready for the playoffs. Uh, football isn't quite like that. But what happens is, is that teams that know how to win and they start out losing, usually there's some corrections they got to put in. And they might have been forestalling, but they get pretty creative. Those holes get plugged in, and then they start winning again. So uh, if anything, uh, this is a wake-up call for the Titans that we got to raise our game. And they can do that. They, they, they got the players who can do that. And uh, how long are they going to – Derrick Henry ain't hurt. I'll put it like that. He ain't hurt. They're going to get that blocking together so that he will get on a roll. And because he, he ain't hurt and he ain't lost the step. So watch out. He coming. He coming for you. That's what I'm saying, Bird Lady. All right. Well, yeah, he, there, there again, he's coming for you. But, you know, the Titans won 23 games in the past two regular seasons. That's third best in the AFC, fifth best in the entire NFL. As Spitface and I alluded to, the division is so weak, you really can't count the Titans out. I mean, you, I mean the, the, the Jaguars, come on now. We we just know that and the Texans, I mean, eventually they're going to fall. And you, like you said, Spitface, we're going to be watching the Colts and Titans fight for that division. And the one thing, and, and Derrick Henry, yeah, he's going to have a comeback, you know. He, we have to keep in mind, Derrick Henry was out with a, with injury last year. He had a, had surgery, uh, so I think now it's going to be a little slow for him to get back into shape. But he should be back on track with the Derrick Henry we are accustomed of seeing. Also, the one thing that the Titans didn't do well was rush the passer. Now they have a guy named Landry. I mean, they paid a lot of money from in the free agency. Um, you know, um, they are spending that big money on him. They also got uh, Bud Dupree. So they finally have a defense rushing the passer, which is going to help them down the future. It's just, you know, it's just a slow start. It's just a slow start. And, um, you know, um they, the reason why they don't have that receiver anymore, because you remember that A.J. Brown was traded to the um, – was he traded? Yeah, he was traded to the Eagles, so, so which didn't make any sense at all. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, they're growing. They're going to get their um, – they're going to be able to work with their new receivers, and they'll have um, a more cohesive – unit on the offensive side. Uh, one thing Tannehill was able to do in the games, the first two games, he, he is spreading the ball around more so with the wide receivers. So it's just a matter of him getting used to these wide receivers. And like we said, if when Henry gets back into shape and be able to be that monster he is, uh, I mean, things are going to look up for the Titans. I mean, like you said, Spitface, they've won so much. So it's just you just don't see – them declining to the point where they're not going to make the playoffs. And you just don't see it. But, but the one thing this time around, they're going to have to win the division because we already know the AFC, the AFC in general is so packed with a lot of great teams that they're probably not even going to be in the wild card um, decision because of the fact they've already lost two games as it is. So, um, you know, I, I think um, – they need to win that division, and I, I I think they'll be able to do it. I mean, like I said, the Titans have done it what for the past several years as it is to be the, the the winner of their division. So we look, I look for them to to change it and get back on track, and they're gonna be fighting like you said with the Colts. Anyway, spit face, please take us to break. <laughs> all right, all right, and the wacky AFC South. But I do like Lovey Smith. All right. <laughs> On the other side of the break, we have another performance from Michelle Ayers on Shout Out Part 2. Please keep your ears on those speakers. Welcome 
come back. The music flows from around the globe to get a shout-out from the crew. Spit face over to you. All right, we have another performance from Michelle Ayers. Now, DJ, let's hear Ace Beat Stepping Mix. So, she got, so I don't know if this is how stepping you, but something. We're going to hear it.
beat stepping mix. Had my toes jiggling and my booty moosing. I'm going to give it a try. A shout out. I thought it was a, she stayed in her lane uh, uh, and that it was a, a, a really good uh, uh House beat, really good house beat, and and like I said to you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, sometimes you got that house beat that 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 make you uh, break out your your exercise gear. So I would enjoy listening to this and doing some stretching, you know, you could you know doing some stretching and you know that kind of stuff and you know wiggling, get the body on loose. So it's a fun. I thought it was a nice fun track. First lady, what's the birdie? Yeah, I'm going to shout out. It looked like she remixed the the, the other mix <laughs> from the first song. I think it was a remix of the first song. But, um, no, I actually, yeah, it was definitely, the, the, it was a groove with the song, definitely the beat of the music that, you're right, is house music and um, does it right quite well. So I'm going to shout it out. All right, that's the end. A shout out if you liked what you heard from Michelle Ayers. Check her out at linktr. That's one one linktr dot e e forward slash Michelle Ayers music, or just check her out on Old Grumpy Radio Network. If you would like to be heard or have any comments, any 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 comments, please send your emails and tracks to talent at oldgrumpyradio dot com. First Lady, over to you. Yeah, it's um, time, you know, for the hardball picks. And um, let's go over these totals. Uh, We have two weeks of totals to present. So from 9-11-2022, I had zero points. Dizzy Mac, we we actually were in the positive because I consider zero points to be in the positive. <laughs> <laughs> Dizzy, Dizzy Mac had a hundred thousand points. Spit face, you had minus three hundred thousand points. Uh, for September eighteen week, uh, again I had zero points. <laughs> Dizzy <laughs> Mac had zero points. And Spit Face, you're still in the red. You had minus 500 points. <laughs> so right now, this is where we are. Dizzy Mac and uh, Dizzy Mac and me are tied for minus 250,000 points. <laughs> and Spit Face, you are going backwards the wrong way. You are at negative 113, well, negative 1,300 points. All right. So let's get to the new. Uh, oh, actually, no, we're not having any. We're going to uh, suspend the hardball picks, and we will resume with the playoffs. So now we are on the pigskin picks. Now, the production assistants, they were able to get week one and week two results, but they're still working on the preseason results. They said that was very challenging to the producer. So they <laughs> they. They'll have those results. At least they did get two weeks results. All right. So for week one, Spitface and me, we were at 200,000. Dizzy Mac was at zero. For week, excuse me, that was week one. For week two, let me get this right. I have to get this right. Okay. Uh Having issues here. (laughs) All right, hold on for a second. Let me get the uh, picks for the NFL Week 2. All right, so for Week 2, which was 9-18, Dizzy Mac, well, actually, uh, Spitface, you were, you had a better showing. You were minus 300 points. I was minus 500 points. Dizzy Mac was minus 550 points, 550 points. So our totals as of this week, currently right now, Spitface, you, um, you and me are, well, actually, no. Spitface, you're in the lead at minus 100,000 points. I have minus 300,000 points, as Dizzy Mac has minus 550,000 points. <laughs> 
I said, we're not doing too well this year. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know. We we got to do better. So anyway, let's get to the current picks. All right, winners and losers is uh, plus or minus 100,000. The Bills versus the Dolphins. Mm. Uh, 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 uh. Well, mm. I am going to go with the Bills. Bills, Bills, Bills. I'm going to go. I, I, I like the Dolphins. I root for the Dolphins. I'm a season ticket holder for the Dolphins now. But I just think the Bills are that team, and they, I, I think they're going to bring Dolphins down to earth. All right. So Dizzy Mac has the Dolphins. Spit face, who do you have? I'm going with the fish. You're going with the Dolphins. Okay. Let's move along. Rams versus the Cardinals. Mm-mm-mm. This is a tough one because, you know, even though the Rams, uh, the Rams are what, one and one? Yep. Yep. Um, what's his name? Um, um, Stratch. What's his, the, the quarterback oh, Stafford. name? Stafford hasn't looked that great. So I'm going to go with the Cardinals because I think they're running high off of that comeback win. They're going to get their act together. So I'm going with the Cardinals. Uh, Dizzy Mac has the Rams. Spit face. Who do you have? I, you know, I, I uh, these teams are both, like, really kind of evenly matched. And, you know, I always kind of lean toward the home team because when they're evenly matched, but I think that Rams defense wants to prove something. So I'm going to go with the Rams. Okay. Packers versus the Bucks. Dizzy Mac has the Bucks. Spit face, who do you have? It, it's hard to go against Tom Terrific and, <laughs> and his gang. Uh, the, uh, I have a... I actually got this feeling that the Packers are not quite as good as we think they are. Uh, the shellacking they put over the Bears, I, you know, take that game off. You know, I don't get the pack, the Bears were a real competition going up to Green Bay, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, so uh, I think the Packers might have looked at that as, hey, we back on. I, I don't get it. I think there's something amiss. I'm going with Tom Terrific, terrific in the Brady Bunch. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Bucks. And even though the Bucks, a lot of their defensive players are supposedly injured, Brady supposedly has a problem with his hand or something, but I'm still going to go with the Bucks. I'm going to go with the Bucks because, like you said, the Packers are not all that. And um, they their, their offense, even though Aaron Rodgers is a very good quarterback, the receivers are just not what they're supposed to be. And so I'm definitely going with the Bucks. All right. Um the forty ers versus the Broncos. Uh let's see, Spitface, who do you have? Forty ers Okay. I am gonna go with the forty ers also. I just think <laughs> Russell Wilson and that team just look so unorganized on their offense. It's something when, not when, right When there. they have to hire someone to help the coach make game decisions, it doesn't bode well. <laughs> and, you know, you can say what you want. Russell Wilson hasn't looked good either. So, I mean, he has not really looked that great. So, I mean, the funny thing about the 49ers, you know, uh, Jimmy G is back, and Jimmy G looked pretty good for somebody who just came off of surgery. So uh, I'm going to go with Jimmy the G and the 49ers. Uh, now Dizzy Mack has the Broncos, so he's figuring I guess they're home, so they're going to win. But I don't know; they don't look good to me. All right, let's go to over and unders for our prop bets. Jimmy G, two touchdowns. I am going to go push. It mm. says two touchdowns, so it doesn't mean it could be a running touchdown or a passing touchdown. It doesn't say passing. It just says two touchdowns. So I'm going to go with a push. Dizzy Mack has under. Mm. Fit face, what do you have? I'm going over. 
I'm going over. You're going over. All right. Well, you know who they they playing? Um, the Broncos. I don't think their defense was that bad. All right, bad man, three hundred passing yards. Uh, let's see. I'll start this off. Um, I'm gonna go under. Dizzy Mac is under. Spitface. I'm going under. Yeah. Tom terrific, three touchdowns. Oh man, that's a lot. Uh, I'm gonna say push. You know, I don't use the push that much, but three seems like a push. Uh, Dizzy Mac has over. What do you have, Spitface? Mm. Mm. I'm going push. Yeah, push, push. Saquon Barkley, 100 rushing yards. And uh, who did the Giants are playing? The Cowboys? Uh, the Giants. Who are the Giants? The playing? Giants are played. I, I think the if Giants I want, are, uh, they're, they're Or the Washington. Do. Or the Commanders. The, uh, it's a division the, rivalry. I know who went through. But anyway. Uh, it must be Dallas because the uh, Commanders are playing the Eagles. Yeah, I think they play in Dallas, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, Monday night. Yep, Monday yeah, night. Yeah, Monday night. Yeah, night. that's da- Monday Dallas night. Dallas goes to uh, goes to to the uh, Giants. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, I thought it was the Giants. I mean, the the Cowboys. Um, Dizzy Mac has over. Spitface, what do you have for Saquon Bar Saquon Barkley? Uh, you know, this is really tough because he gets you know passing yards and rushing yards, so. He, his combined yardage mm-hmm. is always over. Well, uh, usually leans toward over a hundred, but I don't know if I've seen him in a while just have a straight up hundred plus yard rushing game. So I'm going to go under. Yeah, I'm going to go over because I thought he did last year, uh, last week. Didn't he have over a hundred yards last week? He may have, but it, but he ain't been consistent enough for me. Oh, and it's okay. not him. I mean, he he is not he him. He's been on a revenge tour this year. He's been playing yeah. ball, balling. All right, pick the upset optional. Well, you know Dizzy Mac. He believes in op- upsets because <laughs> I think he's crazy picking the Colts over upsetting the Chiefs. I ain't picking that. He did, but Dizzy Mac, he's picking the Colts to upset the Chiefs. What about you, uh, Spitface? No way! I'm picking that up. <laughs> that, that that's too big a leap for me. Now the the coach may rebound, but it won't start this week. <laughs> wait, in, in, wait up in Kansas City too? Oh no 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 no! Oh no! Yeah, that's when uh, this week or um. I thought the Colts were playing. When, when is, is that game Thursday night game? Is that the third? Because I thought the Colts were playing um, the Titans this week. The Raiders play the Titans. Oh, the Raiders play the Titans. Okay. The Raiders play the Titans. The Colts play the Chiefs. Okay, Colts are playing these. Okay, all right. Yep. My bad. My bad. All right, so we'll see how we do with our picks. We gotta look. We need to get out this red and get into some uh, black here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you stopped in that baseball one because oh, we were horrible. But anyway, let's move along. All right, Spitface, what is your top story to watch this week? Man, uh, it's actually a tie between Udoka and the the welfare uh, king. Uh, Brett Favre, because mm. both of them are going to have more to come out this week. Oh, you think so? Mm. Yeah, you know some more going to come out about Annie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but also, the the way that investigation is going, more is getting ready to start rolling out about, uh, you know, Brady Boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um Actually, I, I just thought my top story this week would be they're going to be talking about that Dolphins Bill game for today. <laughs> <laughs> that's that that's going to be the topic of the week all week long. That's what I think. Mm. Oh, and, and and actually, um, against um Aaron Rodgers, um, you know that that's also going to be the top story because when was the last time Tom and Aaron Rodgers played each other? Oh, it's been many moons. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so that's that's another top story. It's been a while, you know, because I don't think they the, 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 since Tom's been in with the, the the Buccaneers, they did not play each other, or did they play each other in the the um, championship game, in one of the games? In the playoffs, no, they didn't. No, I no, don't think so. no, no. Yeah, so it's been that's to me going to be the top story is the Dolphins, Bills, and Tom Brady versus um, Aaron Rodgers. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, i like to give a shout-out to the Las Vegas, what was it, Las Vegas guys, their name? Las Vegas, uh, the WNBA team. The they won. They, 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 lo- they won the um, championship. Becky Hammond, um, she... Obviously, was a was an NBA coach, and she was eight. I'm sorry, I have to apologize. It's Las Vegas Aces. I do apologize. Oh, that's a, that's Chicago Sky. <laughs> Excuse that, me. That's, that's right. Yeah, it's Las Vegas Aces. So we like to com, com, uh, congratulate them on winning their first WNBA championship. You remember this team is this team is relatively new to the WNBA. And they had Becky Hammond, who couldn't get a head coaching job in the NBA, so she decided that she would go to the WNBA to be a head coach. And she's probably, I think she is the highest paid coach in the WNBA. She makes a million dollars, and that's unheard of. But uh, Becky Hammond definitely deserves She's a darn good coach, and I would love to see her become a head coach in the W. I mean, in the NBA. Who knows? She may could take... Udoka's place. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Check out our current and previous. Oh, excuse me. I'm just so confused here. This has been a wacky world, wacky, wacky world of sports. Anyway, join us in October as we honor our veteran women and veteran women with disabilities. To learn more, please visit our honorourveteranwomen.com. Honorourveteranwomen.com. We thank um, you know, you can check out our current and previous episodes at bras, panties, and sports dot com, and our Facebook page at BPN Sports. And we are definitely trying to get that together to bring you a, a nice media um, content to our radio show. This is Cheryl Smith, the First Lady of Sports Talk, and Spitface. You have been listening to. Bras, panties, and sport.